Okay, here we go guys. Uh, first flight. Just get all of this uh, tightened up a little bit. So it's a beautifully calm day here in Manchester, UK. Um, right, so time to power on the uh, transmitter. Let's see what we can see there. Ooh. Got some, it's got some bars, 12.2 volts, nice one. So I was going to use that little circular white disc um, to define uh, where the, the takeoff position is. Um, so just so you can see there, I'm just going to disconnect, uh, just connect the battery. Um, so yeah, we can uh, test just how good the uh, the return position is. Okay, so the uh, the battery is connected, but I just cannot uh, find a way of getting this to uh, to actually fit inside. Um, I have actually rotated the battery around 180 and put it back in, um, and we've still got this issue. So <laughs> I'm not too worried. You know, I'm just going to fly this open. It's not going to be too detrimental. Um, yeah. So cameras on. Whoop! There we go. Brand new, fresh lens. Let's, uh, let's hope I don't dirty it straight off. Uh, so the camera, I'm just going to turn that on. You hold the, the power for two seconds. Let's have a look. We do have a light on. And then I believe you press and hold record for five seconds. Two, um, one, two, three, four, five. Five. There we go. That is to format the SD card. That's a brand new SD card. Bought it today. Um, so that should be good. I mean, the lights stopped flashing. So yeah, it was an empty SD card to format. It shouldn't take very long. And then we're just going to press record there. Um, and we've got uh, a red flashing light once a second. Okay. Uh, in fact, we, we now have footage on here already which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so there we are. Uh, there's a little bit of delay on there. There's probably, I'd say, 0.2 of a second. I don't know if you can see. Whoa, try and do that. A little bit of a delay, but we'll see. For this kind of flying, it should be fine. Um, so at the moment it says, calibrate compass one, rotate the aircraft in level. So it is time for the uh, the drone dance. Whoa, getting dizzy now, hey? Right, what does this say? Calibrate compass two. Got some cool lights. All right. GPS signal low. I mean, that's fair enough. When you just turned you on, haven't we? Um, right. So that's our takeoff position. And this is what we can see so far, which is just that little uh, disc. So I'm just going to turn the uh, turn this dial here and just see. Oh, there we go. All right, so that's as high as it'll go. Take it down just a smidge. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good uh, quality there. Okay, so uh... oh, I tell you what, I'm actually going to turn the remote control off. Um, and turn it on because I want it in mode 2 and I don't know whether it's turned on in mode 2 
So we're going to hold both of these up. I'm quite sure how you meant to do that and turn it on. But anyway, there we go. Calibrate mode. Uh, mode 2. So we'll give it a few spins there. And then hit any one of the... Any one of these. All right, still wants calibration. Well, I'd expect it to be calibrated by now. Hmm, okay. Manual, manual, what do you tell me? I know calibration is fairly near the back here. Start to fly. Callus come from, uh... <laughs> Hold the throttle stick full down, move the GPS switch. Oh, that's to make it... Right, that's calibrating the, uh, the drone rather than the controller here. So transmit level, uh, we want mode two. I need to go back a page rather. There we go, right, so uh, mode 2 is up to the left, up to the left, turn it on. Uh, push the two joysticks to the top left and keep them in this position. Turn on the transmitter. The LED will screen will show calibrate stick. Move the joysticks in a circular motion about three times and then release the joystick and press any trim to save an exit. I mean, I did that. Right. <laughs> Off you go, pal. Off you go. Let's do this again. <clears throat> okay, top left, top left. And on. Okay, let go of the sticks. Press any trim. Come on now. Let's not be silly. Oh well, team. Gonna have to come back to you on this one. Guys, not the start I was hoping for in this first flight video. I just wanted to get this baby up in the air nice and quick and show you what she can do. As you'll see in a minute, it's not the only teething troubles we have in this video. Starting the engines also proves to be problematic, but I'm glad that you get to see the true unedited version of events just in case you choose to buy this drone. Uh, but know that this isn't the norm. So I've had the drone for a few weeks now and I can confirm that things are much smoother now. Uh, everything connects and starts up first time and in essence, uh, nothing that I've done since has made the problem go away. Uh, it just looks like the controller was, um, was having a, an off day. So feel free to, uh, to use the link below. You can skip to the bit where the, the drone actually first takes off. Um, otherwise, uh, Keep watching and we'll take you through um, starting the, the drone up uh, or the, you know, the problems with that.
Okay, so in the end I basically just turned the controller off and on again and I'm really hoping that this ends up being in mode 2. Uh, but we'll see, right, so to start the engines, I believe, I pull outwards and down. So the H plus is... Hmm. So we've got an H of plus four degrees. Let's see if we can focus this quickly there. Uh, so it doesn't like what it's presumably the heading, is it? Rotation, PS, speed, hmm, okay. Well, Okay, GPS we've got 12, coordinates, I know I'm not too fussed, God, if you guys came out in here and found me in a field, that'd be uh, fantastic. Um, heading 1, so I've, I've rotated the, uh, the drone now, so it's now facing to the right, and that has given us a heading of 1. So that in red doesn't seem to sort of make any difference. Um, I just can't get it to turn on. Come on now. Definitely outwards to start the menu. So Okay guys, so basically the uh I'm just going through the, the transmitter at the moment, just going through all of the different menu options, looking to see whether there's anything that can explain uh, why we've been seeing the behavior that we've been seeing um, It turns out that the manual Gives one set of instructions in terms of configuring uh, The controller so when you want to put it into mode 1 or mode 2 it tells you to configure the controller so you uh, Rotate the two sticks around and around uh, It then tells you to press one of the trim buttons um, and it turns out that uh, For my controller perhaps for the the firmware that uh, my phone, uh, my controller came shipped with, that you have to press the uh, escape button. Um, so yeah, just going going through the menu options, uh, you know, for the next sort of two minutes, just looking for anything that's in there. Um, it definitely needs a video on its own, going through all of the the menu options, changing the the transmitting frequency. Um, so you can do that. It doesn't tell you which uh, band, it just tells you the, the raw frequency. So if you know that someone else is on a particular, you know, band versus number, you know, band A3, uh, you need to have a conversion table handy to be able to switch those two across. Um, so yeah, obviously the heading that the drone was facing in and the fact that it comes up red on the display isn't anything to do with um, getting the drone uh, turned on. Uh, as it turns out, um, I basically just turn the controller off, turn it back on again, and miraculously, out of nowhere, um, the motors start to spin. So, you know, in this case, that, that was the fix. Um, uh, but actually, ever since this maiden uh, flight, um, things have actually behaved themselves a lot more. So it's maybe just teething troubles with this with this first flight. So in about ten seconds, uh, the controller gets turned on, and we finally uh, spin the get get the motors up to speed, and I get to take this baby for its uh, for its maiden flight. So 
I just let the motors uh, spin there for a little while um, just to kind of see see what their behavior was and obviously when you first fire it up they just spin at a, at a nice constant speed um, it's a nice low speed it's not going to give you any uh, you know lift um, it's just to sort of warm the warm the motors up um, yeah so you can see taking it for its first flight I mean the drone is quite nippy given its size it's also kind of throws itself into into the angles quite a lot um, initially that threw me I thought you know something was a bit strange or odd with it um, I think it's just the way that it is you know for a big drone and personal preference if it throws itself into the into the turns and into the you know the drives forward um, it's going to be a lot nippier as a beginner that's probably a little bit unnerving um, but once you get used to this drone that's that's probably just you know how it is and you know it's just to do the, the settings um, as, as they are uh, so talking of settings if you put it into GPS hold mode it will have a maximum incline of 30 degrees and if you turn that off so if you turn GPS hold mode off it will then go up to 40 degrees and that basically means that you can fly that much faster and turn that much quicker um, but obviously at the, at the price of having that sort of that wobble uh, now you'll see it's in altitude uh, sorry it's in uh, return to home mode uh, so the, the, the characteristics of return to home mode are that it rotates very slowly so you can see that just then um, and it also moves very slowly so it will translate across this field very slowly and it turns out that um, the GPS uh, coordinates weren't particularly locked in it wasn't happy with with its starting position and so it just drifts uh, towards those those trees that you can see in front of us and so obviously it's not returning to its home position and so the time comes to uh, to turn that off and take control you know take manual control of the uh, the aircraft again so with that, with the return to home not working properly, um, obviously that's a little bit of a concern because it's a, a really nice safety feature to have if you know things get out of control. It was obviously time to just bring the drone in and uh, and land it. So that noise that you can hear is the um, the sound of the gimbal. So if the gimbal's, um, there's, there's a relay to tell it that it's in its correct position and if it's not, if it's not able to um, achieve that position um, enough then it will, um, it'll, it'll sit there trying to move like a very tiny amount and it, it just gives you this, this crackle sound. Um, I presume with a firmware update or playing about some of the settings um, we might be able to uh, fix that. Uh, but that's just what that noise is just so that you know um, so at this point yeah I've disconnected the battery and just reconnecting it now the hope is by doing that that I can recalibrate everything uh, start off with a brand new uh, GPS start position uh, like a new home position um, and yeah we obviously need to do the uh, obligatory uh, 180 degree dance that's that crackling sound you can hear now usually just tipping it down just a small amount will make the sound stop um, obviously you can see even in a slightly tilted down position initially it did have the sound there still so it's a little bit random which I, I don't quite like um, here we start the dance So yeah, the easy fix for the gimbal in terms of software is to um, make the acceptable position um, slightly wider than its uh, its current setting, um, so that it you know when it's roughly in it in the correct position, it'll just stop driving the motor, which would be a really sensible way forward. And definitely something I'm gonna look into. Okay, so little restart of the engines, and. Uh, we take it for its uh, 
or for its first uh, hover test. So we just take it up to you know slightly more height and see how this thing, how stable this guy is. I mean, it's it's pretty good. It is pretty good for uh, you know GPS hold. And again, back to just uh, uh, doing some flight manoeuvres. Just get a getting a feel for this uh, this little baby. I mean, in terms of speed, I'm reasonably happy with this. Um, I think it's got a, a top speed of you know, between sort of 20 and 30 miles an hour. I mean, it's it's reasonable for a big size drone like this. It's never going to be a racing drone, um, but certainly ample for you know getting places. And with a 25 minute battery life uh, or thereabouts, you know you can really cover some distance in that time if you if you want to. Uh, so here we are into uh, return to home. You can see it doing the slow rotations and just a very subtle movement left left to right, you know, just getting the position just right um, before it comes down. So I have seen this with one or two other drones. It does a uh, like a landing bounce. So this is the drone just determining where the where the floor is. Um, as a drone gets very close to the ground, the air pressure underneath um, increases, and so it'll pick that up on the, the onboard barometer. And so in this case it does two bounces, and then finally comes to a stop. And then I manually kill the, uh, the engines there. Okay, so we fire things back up, and it's time to give this baby a little bit of height. And see how things do there. As you can see, it's only taken a few seconds to, to get some real height on this, and it's because it's got an ascending speed of five meters per second. Uh, just bear in mind, though, that it, bringing it back down is a little bit slower, and that's just a just for the drone to sort of keep its stability. Um, if it fell too fast, um, you know, weird things sort of happen. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I sort of lost a bit of control at this point. Um, I was playing about with the A button on the controller, which I wrongly thought uh, might have stood for altitude hold. But obviously the, the drone has altitude hold, where the A is turned on or off. And it turns out that A stands for uh, headless mode, but I did not realise that at this point. So a little strife to the right there, just to sort of get my bearings. Uh, bring it back into the field. So this with headless mode turned off now. Um, yeah, really threw me that. I had to increase the uh, the height of the drone a lot to get it up over those that line of trees. Uh, so put it into return to home mode again. We should start to see this uh, descending. You'll see that the descending rate is much much slower than the um, ascending rate. I'd say five meters per second going upwards is probably on the, uh, the the low side. It's probably a little bit faster than that. And then similarly, the um, the descending speed, um, certainly in return to home mode, is much much slower than uh, three meters per second. So in the confidence that this will now actually return to, to its home starting position, um, you know, it's uh, good to give it a little fly around. Um, and so at this point I start flying uh, first person 
Um, so looking down at the controller and just using that to, to, to guide the aircraft, not flying line of sight. Uh, just take it through the goalpost there just to sort of see how things look. Uh, obviously the field of view on this camera is, is excellent, it's what you'd expect uh, for a drone like this. Um, and overall, I mean I've been fairly impressed with it, the, you know, the overall speed is, is good, the camera footage is good, um, it is stable. Um, I have ordered and I have got plans to fit a, a two axis gimbal. Um, that is one that is uh, stabilized um, and I will be posting a video of that um, in due course um, guys I mean I just want to say a really big thank you for for watching I mean we're coming to the end of this video um, I just want you to enjoy the last flight and uh, the last quick little stretch and um, look out for my other videos it's uh, Frank Hall from Manchester UK over and out